take over the city, yeah, baby. Follow my lead, everybody get ready. All my girls are with me tonight. Let's turn it up now. Hey, everyone, this is Jamie with Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby. Today, we have a special guest with us, Miss Clark Byard. She is the wife of our very own Kevin Byard, and she's going to be joining us for our holiday edition of our podcast. Yes, we're so excited to have her. And before we talk all things holiday and get you in the mood for Christmas or whatever you celebrate, we are going to get to know Clark a little bit better. So let's just start from the beginning. Okay, Where are you from? I am from Decatur, Georgia. So I have a little bit of a strange history around that. I lived with my grandparents my whole life and my mom and my granddad was in the army. So I was actually born on the army base in Louisiana. <laughs> oh, wow. Fort Polk. Fort okay. Polk, the army base. What part? Where's Fork Pope? I have no idea. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's in Louisiana. I know that. Um, uh, Derrida or like somewhere okay. around that kind of area, I would assume. Okay. Um, they lived there for quite a bit. So my mom brought me down there and had me at that hospital there. Then we moved to Denver until I was about three. And then we moved to Decatur, Georgia. And then we moved to Boston. And then we came back to Georgia. But I've been in Georgia the longest. So that's oh. where Kevin and I met um, in high school in Atlanta. Oh, oh wow. what grade? Yeah. Uh, tenth. Oh wow! Did yeah. you start dating, or were you? Yeah, friends? we started dating in tenth grade. <laughs> so I did you that. break up between like then? No. Or you just stayed together through yeah, college and everything? Been I just the got whole the time. chills. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's awesome. Yeah, been together the whole time. Wow. Yeah. So how long have y'all been married now? Uh, three years. Okay. I knew it was soon because I remember those yeah. pictures. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, they were stunning. Thank you. We had a great time. Our whole family came. It was. It was amazing. We but you'd been time. dating how long before he proposed? Wow. Uh, like probably seven, about 10. Yeah, oh. probably about eight years. Wow. Yeah. That's great. So yeah. you were really there through his whole career, like high school, college. And yeah. Then. So I've seen, yeah, I've seen his whole career from the beginning. So has my family. So they're always <laughs> excited when they come up. It's hard for them not to pass the billboard with him on and not start That's crying. Oh. They cry at everything. They see him on the stadium. They're like, oh my gosh, Kevin. <laughs> That's we so love sweet. Him. Somebody with the jersey on. I'm like, oh my god! I know him. <laughs> they cry at a drop of a hat. But we, yeah, we've watched the whole thing. We actually went to two separate colleges, so I would fly back to Tennessee and then go back to school. Where did you go? I went to Howard University in uh, Washington D.C. Oh wow! Awesome. What did you major in? Uh, pre-law. <laughs> Are you kidding wow. me? Wow! No, Clark. yeah, completely opposite. <laughs> right now, I'm training to become a doula, so that they're obviously not using my degree. <laughs> oh wow! Oh. Yeah, but yeah. And you guys have two children, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, what are yes. their ages and names? So my daughter is the oldest. Her name is Eliana Rose Byard. She's named after, her middle name is after my grandmother, Rosemary. And she is two. She just turned two August 22nd. And my son, Kevin Byard the fourth, he is one. He turned one August 23rd. Oh my gosh. So. <laughs> and they're a year apart. That's yeah. crazy. They're that a year apart. Crazy. He was born um, at home by accident. <laughs> The well, day after my daughter's COVID birthday party at her house. So. <gasps> Tell us about that. Because I, I remember the phone call. Oh. Like Kevin calling John. And I woke up. And I'm like, what's going on? Clark is having her baby? And he's like, uh, Jamie, Kevin Kevin just delivered the baby. I'm like, oh, my, oh yeah, my God. It was so insane. Tell us about that. It was full-on Lifetime movie special. We, uh, <laughs> it was insane. We had the, the little birthday party for my daughter the night before. Because of COVID, thanking God, that's the only reason why Kevin was at home because this mm, was training camp. Yes. Mm. So if this had been the year before, he, I would have just been at home by myself. Yes. So <laughs> thank oh, God for that. Geez. I don't know what I, I would have been up a creek. <laughs> And I'm also thanking God that he didn't pass out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he went into full game day mode. Like, come on, like, turn around. I'm like, ah. <laughs> okay, like, I got it. Yeah, oh he, he's, he's been under pressure. I'll say that. That's Wait, crazy. so did you just wake up with contractions and kind of yeah, like. Yeah, my water didn't break. <gasps> I didn't have any of the pre. All the things that they tell you and all of that movie. Sp I thought it was going to be like you're in a wheelchair. You get rushed in the hospital mm -hmm. and like you have a baby. But obviously not. I didn't have any of the pre did you have it with signs. your daughter, though? So I was induced with my daughter. Oh, okay. So my doctor called me and was like, hey, we're having a baby today. And I'm like, oh, okay. And we <laughs> came in, and that was another thing. I had to call Kevin at the uh -huh. facility and get him out of the uh, 
training camp then the same time the year before and have him leave the facility for that and come for that. But so I had never had labor, but like active labor before, because when you're induced, they give you the right. You know, yeah. 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 So I was, I had the epidural before anything started. So I yeah. was kind of just chilling out. With my <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could do this. Like, yeah. I'm day. like, yeah, let's have seven more. Like, I don't, I didn't feel a thing. Wow. But yeah, definitely not the next time. <laughs> Did they say why? What happened? Um, no. There's no explanation on why your water didn't break. And Well, they the running theory right now is that my kids are so close together that he just kind of had a good way out. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. They're like, well, like, he probably just knew what he was doing. He, You know, oh she gosh. paved the way. But yeah, he, he just came out and I don't even think it was 45 minutes. But to not feel it, that's kind of nice. And then all of a sudden. Well, well I mean, like the first part <laughs> <laughs> well yeah um yeah and then i'm sure you were like give me to the hospital I need my girl. <laughs> well, listen, we had gone to sleep we had gone to sleep and we were like well the baby's not coming today you know i had my backpack i'm a type a person i had my possible backpack for like two months i had uh-huh. a the list i had a bonder with my birth plan i had aromatherapy <laughs> candles <laughs> <She's me. laughs> That's Abby. <laughs> I had it. I mean, I had a full plan, so that definitely was the complete opposite of what I was thinking. But we had gone to sleep. Kevin goes. Kevin's a, a granddaddy. He wants. He goes to sleep at like nine thirty, ten o'clock every night. Anyway, <laughs> granddaddy. So he, by eleven, he was knocked out. So I'm like, go to the bathroom, and I'm like, oh, I think I'm in labor. But by by the time I realized that mm-hmm. I couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. So I'm like just crawling, like trying to oh, get geez. out the bathroom, and I'm like, he's he's just snoring. I'm like, you gotta be kidding like, me! Get up. I'm like, Kevin, he, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh like this is like a real life situation. Like I kind of need you to wake up. So I'm like throwing conditioner at him from under <laughs> my vanity because that's all I could like reach. I'm like, oh get it! Oh my! And he God. wakes up. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm having a baby. Oh my God! And he didn't oh. believe me. Well, he thought that like, oh, it's just painful. Like we can make it we only live like 10 minutes away from the hospital uh-huh. she's so like we can make it we can make it like put your pants on like it's not happening uh-huh. it's not happening so the doula he called our doula uh-huh. and she had on her way but she lives in Murfreesboro so she was like trying to get there and he, she's like well look down there so he goes all I hear him go oh my god <laughs> I see the head and oh my god it was that quick <gasps> wow that quick. so he had oh no my choice gosh. yeah that wow. that's insane but the baby was Fine, safe yes. and good thank and- god no no complications i mean he came out healthy with seven pounds <gasps> yeah by the time the ambulance got there we were just sitting there hanging out and they came <laughs> how big is he now he's a big boy oh, he is huge he's a big he's boy. huge eliana's about 26 pounds i uh-huh. want to say he's 23 and a half he's so wow. they're the same size people That's always crazy. think they're twins oh wow. i bet they do they're the exact same size how are they together great yeah she's a she's a little mommy now she has to like get him to where he's going and checks on him he was crying earlier just because he was tired she came over and was patting him on the back Aww. and I was like it's okay buddy that's sweet <laughs> do you guys want more kids do you think or you don't know yet? you know what I don't know I don't think so we're kind of like in a good groove with the two and like you know we like to travel and then with games like everything that's going that's on tough. it's like yeah it's like a ready to go like starter set so i don't know yeah. <laughs> we're kind of getting in a little groove i'm i'm really loving it so i don't know we'll see yeah but you guys that's are a, so young a, yeah too, right you yeah. have time to figure it john out john used to always say he's like we have two that's man to man well i don't want to go in zone coverage that's <gasps> how i think he, he used I to how to tell kevin that because i think that's exactly how kevin, <laughs> <laughs> i think that's exactly how kevin describes the situation yeah, that's exactly what he says and he also says we're going to end up with three girls oh so if we have three girls that's three weddings oh I, that's I don't true want to do three weddings that's true <laughs> that's true that's very true and if they're anything like me and how i like parties and <gasps> can we talk about your party you just recently had a party yeah oh my birthday oh, i had a birthday party goodness. a little while ago yeah that was insane oh it was thank you beautiful well we usually that. do like a brunch so we usually uh-huh. do like a uh, charitable moments where we go volunteer. Um, since COVID, a lot of places oh. aren't bringing in volunteers. The last year we did it before COVID, we went to Thistle Farms and volunteered, and then we had a brunch the next day. Uh-huh. This year, so many of the girls that have participated last year are around the country now, mm-hmm. so everybody had flown back in for it. So I'm like, well, I can't have people get babysitters and like do all the things, and then we go and like sit, you know, yeah. and have a little dinner somewhere. Like, we got to do it big if y'all are gonna leave your families and. <laughs> So we actually had a brunch at my house in the morning. Uh, we did goat yoga. 
Uh-huh. Oh, so they brought little goats out and they jumped on us and they did like <laughs> poses and the whole thing. I loved the girls it. flipped out. I loved watching it. But we had it. a great time until they started like waterfall pooping on my back. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. Um, and then we went to the 1230 Club. Uh-huh. Um, and they have like a little room up there that has like a little terrace on the side of it. So we got to sit in there and have dinner together and go to the balcony and take pictures and just kind of yeah. talk with everybody. Yeah. Um, and then we went to Elliston Soda Shop and we kind of oh, yeah. we closed it down and we got chandeliers brought in Your and pictures. flowers. It was gorgeous. We had they like, let wow. you do that? Yeah. They let you rent it out? That's How did you hear about that? Well, I didn't. I kind of just caught around <laughs> <laughs> and see who would like deal with oh. my craziness. <laughs> Maybe you should be a party planner. <laughs> well, I have a really good one that yeah. I work with. His name is Josiah. He does Ninth and Everett. It's his company. Okay. And he is like, just tell me whatever and I'll, we'll figure it out. He's wow. amazing. So I come up with the most insane things and he, uh-huh. I'm like is that too he's like no we can do it we can do it <laughs> <laughs> so Nothing yeah too much for so he brought in um uh r&b band and oh so they gosh. played on the stage and they pass around banana splits and we had cake and we had oh all gosh. the things so was, we had a great time i wow. loved it i will say time. i love seeing all the pictures of all the ladies oh, thank and you all the the ladies that were here before mm. that i got to meet at the same time yeah. i met you it just I love seeing all that. It was yeah. nice. It was a little reunion to I get back together. And I yeah, love a that. lot of them are retired now too. So it was really fun to like all be in the same city again. Cause that, unless we do something yeah. event wise, it probably won't happen again like that. So it was really special. Isn't it amazing? Cause that's the way I look at with us being with, well, this is our third team. There's just, it's football family mm-hmm. wherever you go. And my kids have football cousins and yeah. you know, it's just, I love, um, I love seeing everybody throughout the year. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is it's that, special. Is that who you usually hang out with or all like other wives and stuff here, like on a day to day basis or? It depends. It's kind of a mix. I have like neighbors and people that I've met throughout, like just living in Nashville that I hang out quite a bit. Um, but the girls here are so sweet. It's hard not to want to just be <laughs> up under them all the time. I don't know if we just have like a really yeah. good set, like a really good team here or what. So, you know, the she's friends are amazing. with Who? Mallory. Oh, oh, yeah, you she's are? a sweetheart. Yeah, oh, yeah. Awesome. when Kevin and I first moved to Nashville, we actually lived next door to her and Kyle. Oh, and wow. uh, we've been friends ever since. And so that was before both of us had kids, it. and now we both have two kids. Yeah, and yeah. your kids are I can similar see. ages. Yeah, they're similar in age, yeah. Oh, that's fun. That's so yeah, fun. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. So what is – I'm, like, so curious because I know nothing about the NFL, really. Yeah. Like, what's your year look like? Like, is Kevin gone a certain amount? Like, I, I just don't know anything about it. Well, our year, and Jamie can probably attest to this, too, it's a little bipolar. So I love that. During, <laughs> it's like cut and dry. During the season, it's, you know, we're focused. We're in a routine. We're like, okay, dad is going to have to go do this. So we're getting everything together. It's, yeah. very, it's very scheduled. Then in the off season, it's like, oh, we're just happy to like be all together. Like, <laughs> yeah. let's just go lay out on the porch and have a picnic. And it's just oh. very relaxed and go by the flow. And so it's just completely different depending on what time okay. of the year it is. But we love it. That's hard, though. Are you do you just kind of buckle down with your kids and go like, hey, I'm going to hang out with friends. I'm going to have family in to help out. Yeah. Um. I think in the beginning it's hard because you just get kind of get adjusted. Nine times out of ten, you're like moving to a place where you don't know anybody, right? Um, which is I think is another reason why a lot of girls kind of like stick to each other because you probably don't know anybody else there unless you lived there for a while. But I try not to complain. We did an event with um, the Boys and Girls Club a few years ago, and there was an officer there, and he was helping us out with the kids and handing out gifts and everything. And his wife came up to me and she said, "It's so hard for your husband to be gone all the time and this that, and the other." And I I couldn't believe she said that to me because I'm like, your husband is a police officer, you right. know, yeah, and I'm like, I'm never. So ever since then, I'm like, I'm never complaining a day in my life because she yeah. has to think, is he coming home? Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. so it's hard. That's a good attitude. But it's not terrible, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, nice. I look at it sometimes as it's almost like being an army wife. Yeah. But again, schedule like wise. what you just yeah. schedule wise, but what you just pointed out our husbands are coming home yeah and um but that's the way i put it i'm like god we don't have it as bad yeah. you know mm-hmm. their schedules are yeah the really schedule tough. the schedule is tough yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a tough yeah. schedule but you know what it's just it is what it is yeah we're blessed so we just try to you know 
You guys share the love, though, right? Because I was reading about, like, your contribution to DCS and oh, stuff yeah. here in Nashville, which I just thought was so heartwarming. Oh, thank you. Can you, you tell us about it? Yeah, so we have a foundation, Kevin and I. It's called the Byatt Family Legacy Fund, and we're really big on second chances. Like I said, my granddad was in the military. He was actually a chaplain in the military in the Army. So I always grew up being that house where people, he did marriage counseling. He did all the things outside of our house. So I was just always around that kind of atmosphere. Sphere. And so I always had just always looking for ways to help people because he was such a helper, such a servant to the Lord. And so I always try to find ways to help. And then Kevin has just really been a go getter his whole life. Everything he's done, everything he's ever had to do, he really grinds and to get there. But that hasn't been by himself. There's so many people that have reached out and helped him and like seen something in him and gave him a chance. And so we really have just centered our foundation around God's grace because we feel like that's just a common theme in both of our lives. Like there's nothing that we have done on our own. Like it's been mm -hmm. somebody that said, hey, can you, you know, I can help you with this or I can do this. And it just has carried us throughout. Mm -hmm. So we try to like insert that in people's lives a little bit where we can. And so we did the renovation of the um foster care center for child services here in Davidson County. It's the only center in uh, Davidson County. So they touch every child that's going into the foster care system. I want to say it's about 700 kids in the foster care system right now. Wow. Um, and so they take them there until they can find placement. Um, usually they try to do that in 24 hours. So we renovated that space. So we wanted the kids, since every one of them come in there, to feel warm and happy because mm -hmm. usually these are emergency types of situations and it just broke my heart I couldn't imagine you know being taken out regardless if the situation was bad or not you're still taken out of what was familiar to you right and to a whole nother facility with strangers and you know it's just yeah. uncomfortable and we're not going to fix that we can't fix foster care but we're hoping just to like warm it up a little bit make it a little brighter make them feel a little bit more comfortable when they walk in yeah well, we we didn't go there for that initially Kevin was speaking for their graduation ceremony for the kids and so we had to meet there to go over everything and the woman was so passionate about everything that they do there she was telling us everything and I'm like how can we help like in the next couple months because I don't know that's what else incredible. we can do yeah. and that's what we came up with so that's great yeah so we're wow. excited you were about supposed it. to be there at a certain at I that so. time yeah. god brought you there to see that and the confirmation was that one of the plumbers that came during the renovation brought a kid with him to help him out the kid had been in foster care and he said i remember coming in here as a child me and my four siblings and it did not look like this <gasps> he said he like he almost cried Aww. he was like this and i said okay this is right we're supposed yeah. to be <laughs> Wow. So it's just been amazing to just see people's faces light up. Yeah. I've loved watching y'all because whenever whenever Kevin was drafted, y'all literally started like with the ground running yeah. with your foundation. And he's always been in front, you know, it, with the media and with just helping with the community. And it's been it's been amazing to watch both of y'all do that. Thank you so much. It's yeah. been it's been amazing to be able to do, to do it. Yeah, it's a blessing just to see people's faces and see you know just a little hope. You know we can't mm -hmm. fix everything, but just so people feel like okay, there's somebody else that cares about me. Yeah, that's really all we want to do. So do you pick different organizations each year, or mm -hmm. how do you? How does so the we fund have work? programming that we do every year that's just constant. Um, that's annual. We have our Thanksgiving program, we have a Christmas program, um, and then we have our football camp that we do every year. Oh, nice. Um, um, so we we pick different organizations each year so we can try to spread that around. But we also have a grant program called the Grace Grant. Mm. Um, and people can apply to that through our website. So we do it two organizations wow. a year and two individual families or individual people. And they can just write in and tell their story. And we just pick from there. There's no requirements for the Grace Grant other than you need a little help. <laughs> like, yeah. That's really it. So we just try to pick from that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, good for y'all. That's Thank amazing. You. Thank you so much. How can people get involved with the, Can they donate on your site or anything? Yeah. How so we that... have a donation button on our site. Okay. And then we also have a contact form and people can just submit their information that way oh, because nice. we do such different events throughout the year. It really just depends on what event we're doing and how much help we need. So yeah. we kind of just refer back to that or people can sign up for the newsletter on our website and that way they can see what they do and don't want to, you know, participate in and they can just pick from there. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So do you have, I'm, I'm picturing two kids 
this huge foundation. Please tell me you have somebody that helps you with the foundation. Yes. Yeah, so, well, we have a grant writer. Okay. And he is amazing. He helps mm-hmm. us get grants to really be able to do all these things. He helps us reach out to organizations. We've been so blessed. Walmart, United Way, we have very big sponsors that are always willing, Crosspoint, that help us pull off a mm-hmm. lot of big things. I love Crosspoint. They are amazing. They mm-hmm. are amazing. Oh, they so, sure are. Yeah. So he and I really worked together to try to get everything done. I love it. I remember seeing y'all. Was it during COVID? Y'all were on Cross Point. Oh, yes. Um, we did a Christmas giveaway. That's what it was. At the stadium, actually. That's what it we was. We turned the stadium into a Santa's workshop. Mm. Um, and these families from the Dream Center had written their Christmas wish list, all the kids and all the adults. And they, we just told them, like, whatever you think, you know, they didn't know what was going on. And we just went shopping. Lauren Tannehill and Ryan Tannehill helped us out with that, too. And so Lauren and I went to Walmart and we shopped everything on these, <laughs> on these wish lists. I mean, laptops and Xbox games and all the things that the kids wanted. And some of them were so sweet. They're like, well, we just want a bed set. And like, oh, my God. We want Sets, you know, like those kind of things. I'm like, you're getting that, but you're getting some fun stuff and too. Yeah. Right. So Walmart let us go crazy. They were standing there with shopping carts helping us push around. <laughs> and then Lauren and I just packed our carts up to the top. <laughs> we had a great time. But then all the kids came into the Nissan Stadium and we had it all set out like a store. And then they started realizing, oh, this is what I asked for. And yeah, it was awesome. Did it have their have their names on it? No, they thought that they were just going to pick from like, like donation types of things. But then they started realizing... Oh like oh no this is what was on my list and yeah it was amazing and then they had like crosspoint had people to wrap everything uh, because some people didn't bring their kids so they could surprise their kids with the stuff on christmas Mm -hmm. so we did it like that too that's awesome it was so fun are y'all doing that every year or was Um, it just i think we might i think we might i think we might we had a we had such an awesome time seeing their faces and Mm -hmm. it was amazing well tell us whenever y'all started dating did he think about NFL did y'all think that this is where your life would lead when did you I did it I I didn't I I mean Kevin has always had a goal to be the best in whatever he can be and obviously his sights were set on the NFL so Mm -hmm. he always saw that in my mind I won't say I didn't think that he can make it there but I didn't I wasn't thinking of myself in that mm-hmm. same situation yeah we were so young I quite honestly didn't think that far down the road <laughs> I'm like I'm going to college um mm-hmm. I'll see you later so, <laughs> so I didn't think that far down I was thinking yeah. like just separate so I always knew that he would be great at whatever he did and I knew that he could make it to the NFL yeah. the NFL is very hard to get into so we're just like we'll see what can happen but he whatever he puts his mind to he's He's going to go get it. Was that like something from his childhood or instilled in him for a reason? Well, actually, Kevin didn't. I don't think he started playing football until high school. Seriously? I hear that so much. Yeah. A lot of players that don't play until... Yeah, Later I on. mean, he played like, you know, outside for fun, but on any type of organized sports, like mm-hmm. he didn't do any of like the little league kind of stuff. And he didn't do any of that. He yeah. got like serious, like organized in high school. Wow. So, I, and he wasn't a safety either. He played like quarterback in high school. He played offense and defense when we were in high school. <laughs> like he literally didn't leave the field. He played the whole game, offense and defense. I want to wow. say he played wide receiver and quarterback. Is that because he was that good or is that because it was a small school? Um, probably both. both. <laughs> <laughs> probably both. I actually, um, I danced in high school. So I would stand in the stands and we would dance in the in the stands. And I so I, that's how I started watching football because I had to. I uh-huh. had to look at the field from the, <laughs> from the stands. But, um, yeah, he played the whole game and he was playing quarterback. And then I don't think he switched to safety until college. So with me, I still flub up football all the time. Yeah. Because he's never with me to watch it. Mm-hmm. So I never really had anybody to say, okay, this is what's going on. And this is why you have this penalty. Um, in fact, Taylor knows about it <laughs> way more than what I do. I'm, I'm not kidding. And it's so cute to watch Bailey because she's starting to understand Aww, it too. And yeah. um, she's asking more questions about it. And so um, when when did you – do you get like that or do you – you're st- strict football mode. You know um, it all. I know defense more than I know anything else because that's when he's <laughs> on. It's like 
oh, I know yes. him. I know what he's has to do. <laughs> so I know that very well. The only thing that still is kind of confusing me is the whole kickoff situation and the punt team and those kind of things. I'm still confused. I know yeah. Brett is amazing. And that's about the extent of I the whole kicking other, that, yes. I, that I know. So I'm still, I'm working on that. That's what I'm working on. We were, uh, we were, we were kicking off and I was like, I asked Taylor, I said, why isn't Brett out there kicking? And she's like, <laughs> mom, he doesn't kick right now. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, working why on not? That. She's like, mom, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, like this really just happened recently. <laughs> I'm still working on that. What I do know is whenever Brett's out there, I'm excited because I know whatever he does, he does it very well and yes. it's very good for the team. But that's about the extent. So I'm, I'm learning that part. Do you, do you and Kevin like talk football or does he kind of come home and turn it off like John oh, no. does, I know. No, mm-hmm. Kevin is a football. Kevin is lives, breathes, and dies. He's going to watch the game. And that's what I don't understand because for me, if I'm doing something all day, I want to come home and, like, not look at it for a little bit. Yeah. He's coming home, and he's watching this the next game, then the game after that. Then he has his his film pad, and he's watching film and watching somebody yes. else play. And I'm like, how are – how how are you doing all like, this do you want to eat dinner yeah point? like do you want to turn to like sweet home alabama or <laughs> watch something else john does well he'll watch his film and all that but he like doesn't talk about it yeah like i know nothing about anything yeah and but i think it, it was sunday and he was on there watching his the game you know <laughs> that we just won yeah and i'm like do you not do you not stop no. this is why i read so much yeah yeah this exactly. is why we read so exactly. much Clark. clark's a big oh, reader Clark as reads well too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah he actually watches the game as soon as he gets home from the game he pulls out his pad and he sits down and he watches the whole game over and everything he did and like what he can do better and wow all that. as soon as he gets home and now my mm-hmm. daughter is noticing it so she'll go sit in so cute she'll go sit Aww. in his lap and she goes daddy and she looks at the little thing, so they watch film together sometimes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> love it. Do they like going to the games? Oh, they love it. Yeah. I don't love it as much, I've, but they love it. I bet. I bet. <laughs> they I love bet. It. Well, it's right in the middle of nap time, so yeah. you're playing Russian roulette. Either it's going to be a really good day or they're like a ticking time bomb. <laughs> yeah. It's like they're going to spaz out in any given second because they're tired and hungry and all the things. But They, they need a nursery they love at it. the stadium. Is that in the new <laughs> Well, they have, have one, but oh, I, think, do they? I think after COVID, we had to. Yeah. take a break from oh, for the wives nice. yeah oh the wives. they good yeah they that's do so nice. which we didn't or did we and i just didn't choose i think i we had one in the patriots i think yeah and i just i just i had yeah. someone that came yeah. mm-hmm. it was easier for me and i yeah. get to tailgate a little longer yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fun that's not what i should do bring somebody else to help out I'm gonna think about yeah i'm gonna think about that it's for a sure lot easier. yeah <laughs> Yeah. You said you're a dancer. Tell us about that because, you know, my tailor's a dancer. Yeah, so, so I, love I, I love to dance. I actually started dancing in church. My aunt was the dance director at the church that she had gone to oh, in wow. Atlanta. So she had me started to dance at like three or four years old. Uh-huh. And um, we would do praise dancing. But then I loved that so much that I went started going to a studio. And so I danced from that point all the way up until my freshman year of college. And then I said, okay, I probably should actually study. <laughs> um, so I stopped then. But that's how Kevin and I met. I was dancing for our, our football team okay. at our high school. And we always were, you know, they had, we had practice around the same time. And then mm-hmm. we ended up just seeing each other. And mm. from there, so yeah. Look at that cute little girl. Yeah. <laughs> that new yeah. student. <laughs> exactly. That, well, he was new. He came, so he has, he's not from Atlanta. His family is from Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he moved to our town about ninth grade, I think. So okay. I didn't meet him until that next year he was there. Oh, so he was fairly new himself. Mm-hmm. Why oh, did they great. move just for? I want to say for like just better opportunities. Yeah. I think the school he had gone to before, um, I don't even think they had a football team or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, so she. I guess he was good and they were like we're gonna go when his mom had a friend that had lived in Atlanta and she, she loved it a lot and she was like hey girl come down here nice and so they moved him and uh, his six brothers and sisters and they moved down oh. and six yeah oh my gosh <laughs> we have a huge family goal? like where Kevin is, is the second oldest of okay. the siblings that grew up in his home wow yeah. okay yeah. so he he's very good with children even when I was pregnant there are things that I didn't even know about pregnancy. He's like, you didn't know that. This <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't have my, all my siblings are very young. So I was going to college and out the house before yeah. I've never lived with a baby until I had them. He, on the other hand, is like, okay, you do this Here's and then you, you put this here. And I said, 
Okay. <laughs> That's nice. He has so a down pack. Yeah, he has a down pack. So I'm learning. Oh my was- <laughs> How young is the youngest? Uh, she is in ninth grade, I believe. 14. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So oh, she, she's a sweetheart. She, yeah. I've known her since she was about four, I want to say. She okay. will come and sit in between Kevin and I. She's like, um, excuse me. Oh, oh, yeah. This is my brother. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You're doing a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> so did you dance at Howard? Um, my first year, you did. I did. Um, we had a homecoming dance team. Home, homecoming is very big at my school. Is the whole city just has to shut down, and they have a whole long weekend of activities and concerts and all the things. And so the dorms actually would have a step show and a dance show and a competition. And so you had to try out for the dance teams and all the different things. And so I danced on our my dorms uh, homecoming. Okay, team. nice. And then after that, you're like, nope, I got to study. Yeah, yeah. So we had, they have a dance team at Howard, actually, that's similar to what I did in high school. Uh-huh. But the scheduling is just so crazy. And I was actually paying my way through school while I was in school. So I was working. Oh, and gosh. So I just, yeah, it was just that's not. A yeah. You that's a lot. You to go see your honey. And- that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. So I was a little booked yeah. up. I was a little booked up. <laughs> I can't be dancing every weekend. I got to go to the Murphy's Yes, Pearl. exactly. So I'm oh. like, if y'all want to give me a scholarship to dance, then I just can't. I can't do it. So. Well, tell us, you mentioned something a little while ago that you're studying to be a doula. Yes. Tell us oh, about yeah. that. So after my experience <laughs> with my both my daughter and my son, um, actually with my daughter, I had a liver condition okay. um, called cholestasis, which I had never heard of. It makes your hands and your feet itch. I'm trying to think during of what it'd be pregnancy? Someone, Yeah, during okay. pregnancy. Oh, wow. But it's like an extreme, like you can't, there's nothing you can do. And there's no rat, like nothing that would indicate why you would be itching, but you just feel like inside of your hands and your feet. Mm-hmm. And so I was telling my doctor, and she's like, oh, you're fine. You're just swollen. And I said, oh, no, ma'am, I don't think this is normal. <laughs> so I did what the absolute worst thing that you can do. I Googled. Oh. And oh, I yes. found out I was dying and I had all these. <laughs> And that was obviously not true. But um, so after I told her that, she said, well, stay off of Google. Um, But I'm like, I will feel more comfortable if you just did the blood test. Right. Just appease me. Just do the blood test. And then she called and go, oh, you're right. You have cholestasis. And, you know, we're going to have to monitor that. So. So Googling can be good. Never. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If it doesn't freak you out too much before you actually get to, (laughs) you know, get to the things. Because I thought I had all kind of tumors and stuff. But apparently that was not. (laughs) That was not a thing. So they can just do a blood test and yeah. tell you oh that's so they nice. did the blood test and they had to monitor me but the thing is that it can stunt the baby's growth and oh. which is what was happening with my daughter so they end up inducing me earlier she was about a month early and they end up inducing me to get her out so she could continue to develop she wasn't mm-hmm. developing anymore oh wow yeah so that was a little bit of a situation uh, so but my next pregnancy my doula says well we just have to keep your liver flushed out drink some oh. dandelion tea and that was it and it worked N- didn't have it. Everything clear and like nothing. So that's why you have a lot of hashtags saying holistic healing. Yeah. That's why. I and I'm not against, that. I'm not against like Western medicine, obviously. If you need stuff, do what works. Yeah. But there's just so many things that if you can't make it, some people don't yeah. have like the insurance. Like if you can't make it to these certain avenues mm-hmm. quickly, there are certain things that if it's not um, life threatening or anything like that, that you can do to try. replace and try that might be easier for you to keep up with. Yeah. So it's more of that kind of thing. So when she did that, it blew my mind. Like there's Absolutely. studies on how eggplant can help lower uh, your blood pressure if people have have a preeclampsia during their pregnancy mm-hmm. if you eat enough eggplant that yeah. can help prevent that so it's just like those little things it's I, like why don't they yeah. tell us yeah so I'm a this. huge believer because as you know my tailor has alopecia mm-hmm. and she now has a shaved head mm-hmm. and um gorgeous girl oh, oh, my thank goodness. you well she when she decided to shave her head it was completely bald at the top mm-hmm. she had just a little patch that you can kind of cover up the bald spot well it just got battered up she was like i I got to do it. Well, one of my girlfriends is she she heals through food oh, wow. and she's amazing and she sat with us in the kitchen and we changed our whole way of eating. Mm. She Taylor got off of gluten and dairy which she needed to do a long time ago since she she also has other autoimmune issues. Mm-hmm. Her hair is it's now back 
It's now back. Are you serious? And I'm not kidding. I'll have to show you the picture because it's incredible. I'm serious. Like all this, a whole handful of head mm-hmm. here was gone. I did also bring her to um, see my little Chinese doctor yeah. who does my acupuncture. Oh, you have to. Oh, yeah. she's amazing. And she did acupuncture on her head. I mean, it wasn't just the top. It was the sides. Mm-hmm. It was the whole back. Mm-hmm. And forever, there was no blood because once you put the needle in there and there's no redness coming to it so yeah. it's saying there's no mm. blood flow mm. and your he- cuticles need blood flow yeah, to, grow, to grow right yeah i'll never forget the day she came running out of taylor's room screaming i mean little bitty doctor we have blood we oh. have blood you know but and it's all because i swear it's all yeah. the change of the diet oh, she was wow. vegan for a year not oh, saying wow. you have to be vegan i mean yeah, she but, eats yeah. meat now but at the time that I swear by it. That's mm, what helped yeah. her. That's I what helped her. It. They say that inflammation and mucus are like mm-hmm. the number one causes of disease in your body. Every every disease starts with either inflammation or with buildup of mucus. And a lot of that is coming from what we eat and how yes. we treat our bodies and what we're putting in our bodies and all the things. So if you can like make those changes like what she's doing, you nine times out of ten yeah. are gonna see very drastic yes. changes. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. Hands down, that's what's that's what saved her head. Oh wow! And now she still has like I noticed the other day she's she gets patches here and there, and it's a seasonal thing. Mm-hmm. And but then they'll grow back, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, you gonna grow your hair your hair back? She's like, nah. Oh nah. yeah, I'm like, no, girl. She was good balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving it. I'll be kind of sad if she <laughs> got the hair back. That's her thing. It's it gorgeous. is. Every now and then she'll play with a wig here yeah. and there, oh, you know? wow. but it's hilarious. Yeah. She Aww. comes down. One time she got it just for the fun of it. Her and her friend went to Party City and she came back with this blonde wig <laughs> and she came downstairs and like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't look going She hair. doesn't need that. <laughs> no hair. What, so no. what is the training for the doula? What does that look like? So I'm training under the doula that I had that I am swearing by. She, she literally saved my life. Yeah. Um. So we're doing – sessions to where she has me doing a course online but we're also doing a lot of in-person sessions as well so i'm going to be going to some births i'm going to do a lot of hands-on work i'm oh my super gosh. excited for that i don't know what to expect because every birth can be so different yeah but i'm very super excited for that um but it's a lot of reading yeah, <laughs> wow. i want to say my book list is probably at least 25 Ooh. books long so um, i'm not even going to ask what you're reading right now because i'm probably not reading yeah, it yeah <laughs> Birthing babies, like all the, <laughs> all the things. It's a lot. Another reason why I, I was kind of looking forward to getting into this field is when I was pregnant with my son, um, I had gone to the nail salon and a girl was telling me how bad of an experience she had at the doctor going to get a checkup. And to make a long story short, she decided that she was going to have her baby at home because her and her husband had watched YouTube videos of how to have a baby. Mm. And I'm like, no, oh, no. <laughs> don't do that. Like, <laughs> at, I'm not telling you have to be in the hospital, but at least like have mm-hmm. a midwife, have like somebody there that you feel. But she just felt so yeah. unsupported that that was her. That's so sad. Yeah. So I was like, what can we do about this? Like, yeah. Right. To, yeah. Uh, I'm just looking forward to hope, hopefully making somebody feel comfortable enough yeah. Yeah. that they To want be their support. advocate, yeah. like at either appointments oh, or at yeah. the hospital yeah. when you get there. Because it is scary when you're in labor mm-hmm. and you don't have mm-hmm. anyone like vouching for you. That's, like, the, that's the main thing for doula is being, like you're saying, right. being an advocate. Mm-hmm. Like that's the whole reason mm-hmm. for having one. Obviously, some people say, well, I'm not going to have it because I'm going to the doctor. But your husband, like my, I know my husband's in there. He's not going to know like all the questions you want to mm-hmm. have to ask. Right. There's so many women that are dying in childbirth and a lot of it's because they're having C-sections that they didn't need to have. Yeah. And But to have that person there that can be monitoring and say hey i don't think it's time to do that or yeah. i don't think that's a good decision for her mm-hmm. that's what you really want yeah Did you have for one? sure i didn't have a doula but i used the vanderbilt midwives for both oh, of awesome. my births and so they i knew that they weren't going to push me in a direction i wasn't comfortable with Definitely, so yeah. if i had if i was using a doctor i would have had a doula just after a lot of research and yeah. stuff um but i never think it i you should always have a doula if yeah. you like, I never think it could hurt. My birds are also very fast. So yeah. it was like, yeah. And midwives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Midwives too. I, I don't mean to isolate that midwife. Yeah. Doula, yeah. Anybody for, that can be there. 
I don't ever remember that being offered or or like me knowing a, what a doula was whenever my kids were born. Yeah, it's I become more I popular, I think, in the last like ten years or so, as there have been so. I think like the C section rate became so high, or yeah. that's kind of when I was having just a six years ago. It was like you know sometimes they'll kind of push you into a C section because you have been in and like there's always medical reasons. You always yeah. want to trust your doctor. Like yeah. I'm not saying that. I think it's just we learned a lot about women needing to advocate for themselves gotcha. and needing someone else in the room to do that for you because you're in labor. Yeah. Obviously yeah. I'm all yeah. Now. No. <laughs> no, there's also been a boom in the profession in general. So uh, I want to say even 10, 15 years ago, the amount of doulas mm-hmm. in that field that there are now wasn't as much of a thing. Like you might in your area might have been three or four of them. Mm-hmm. As yeah. of now, it might be 10 or 15, you know, so that just wasn't as popular. Yeah. Of a situation. Yeah. And they it's also a- support you after yeah. with like nursing or, you know, yeah. like after the baby's there, which is That's so important. Out with too. I had. Yeah. Because I, okay, this is, I told y'all when I was going to do this podcast that I was going <laughs> to lay it all out there. So here we go. I hope this is not the one that John decides to listen to. Uh, so I could not breastfeed. Taylor, yeah. Taylor was tongue tied and I had inverted nipples. So <laughs> I told you I'm throwing it out there. I like it. <laughs> you got the inverted nipple at pregnancy or um, you always had them and didn't know? I think I always had them and did not know. What? So I, she was not latching on. She could not. They wanted to clip her right then and there. And I freaked out and was like, absolutely not. And looking back, I wish I would have done it for both of my kids. I would have tried a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. But I had someone in my face like kind of yelling at me. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, she made me uncomfortable. So of course, they'll be inverted. Mm-hmm. You know, shame. because like, I'm freaking out. That shame in the hospital. I've it heard that horrible. from a lot of people about breastfeeding, like where people like have nurses have shamed moms for not doing it correctly. Yes. Quote unquote, mm-hmm. Or um, not wanting to do it as often as they mm-hmm. felt like they should have been doing it. I couldn't breastfeed either. You couldn't. I couldn't. With the, Ellie came so early that I wasn't even making milk when she came gotcha. out. So we tried, but she, she had to be fed in the um in the NICU for a little bit, Mm -hmm. a tiny bit. And then she had to be fed in like a little special feeder bottle because she was so tiny. So we just had to, yeah, we had to give her formula. Um, And then my son, same situation, but they didn't catch it. He had a lip tie and a tongue tie. And they didn't even let me know until a month and a half after he was born. She had it too. She had a lip tie. She had both. That, yeah, so yeah. I, I couldn't figure out. That's why I had a lactation yeah. consultant come over. I mean, we had a chef making me lactate and producing <laughs> food. I mean, I tried everything. So I say that to say, I don't yeah. know if it was my, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes it just does not work out. Like we tried yeah. all the things and I flipped out too. When they took him back to do, they had a laser for him, mm-hmm. but you can hear him back. There. I was in there. Oh. <laughs> I remember whenever I decided um, that I just had to give up. Honestly, it was I think the day or two after we got home, and by this point, I was having to supplement Mm -hmm. because, I mean, she wasn't eating and she was losing weight. And so the sweet little nurse came in at one point in the hospital and was just like, it's okay, Jamie. She was like, don't be hard on yourself. You know, not this doesn't happen for everyone. She was, I'll never forget her. Ever, ever, ever in my life. So she taught me how to supplement. Oh, nice. And when I got home, finally, John had to sit me down because y'all was exhausted. You could see I was holding the camera. My mom was holding the baby. And you see the camera doing this. Oh, you're <laughs> because I was falling asleep. Oh. <laughs> but, and then at that point, I just went and yeah. I just did formula. And I remember just crying and crying and crying and saying, because you felt like a failure, you, you know? Yeah. And it was a, such a job. And when, you, when you're working out hard, at doing yeah. it and it's not coming and it's not produced you're like what am i why what? can i do exactly. this exactly i have friends who still have freezers full because they were just pumping it out and i'm like what am i doing wrong i'm eating yeah. the cookies i'm doing this i got <laughs> dates like I'm, I'm doing all the things and nothing is working but yeah. i wish like you're saying i wish people were able to talk to women and have better conversations yeah. surrounding breastfeeding because i've known girls too that have told me I had such bad postpartum trying to keep I did. up with breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. And you don't even know, really. I yeah. feel like like I kind of had it with Justin. didn't really know till I was out mm-hmm. of it that I was mm-hmm. a little depressed and mm-hmm. just overwhelmed. So mm-hmm. 
being a doula, uh, you're going to be so good at it. Oh, I can yes. already tell. <laughs> if I have Thank a third, you. <laughs> you're coming over. I'm ready, girlfriend. I got the candles. I got everything that I didn't get to use. Yeah. <laughs> get the bag you packed. Oh, right. on over. <laughs> and you know what's right. so cool? This is why we started this podcast. Yeah. Is to be able to talk about inverted nipples and things <laughs> like this, right? Well, you you might have exactly. just saved a life, Jamie. Yeah, everybody go check your nipples and make sure. <laughs> Don't okay. Be too hard on yourself. So <laughs> since this is our holiday episode, I yes. want to hit like real quick on traditions or food or like we need to talk a little holiday. Oh, yes. You can't skip Christmas. What's I love your, Christmas. Yeah. What do you do at home like that you've done since you were young that you still do? So the main thing we do is we have to read a story out the Bible before we open our presents. And I remember that I'm doing it and I remember hating it so much as a kid. My granddad would break in his old Bible and all the presents would be sitting there in their glory. And I'm like, no, like, just, just one. <laughs> okay, wait, is like, this Christmas morning yeah, or Christmas Eve? Christmas some morning. Some people we have. Didn't, yeah, we okay, didn't do Christmas, Christmas Eve. Morning. Christmas morning. But now that, I th- now that I'm older and I think about it, that's something that I definitely want to like – carry on through my kids because I feel like it gives you like a sense of like this isn't about me this isn't about this right now like Mm -hmm. it's fun to do it but there's such a bigger reason or surrounding Christmas Mm -hmm. and I really want to make sure we continue that now that he's passed continue that tradition throughout my family and my other big tradition is all the music all the cookie decorating all the things when does the when does the music start in your house um my music starts the day well, I'll probably say the night of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's usually, yeah. yeah. Right after we clean the dishes from Thanksgiving, then I'm I'm pulling everything out. I'm yeah. ready to go. I can't yes. wait. I love Christmas so much. That's I what do we do because typically our guys work yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. So for Thanksgiving, John would either go to work early and come home mm-hmm. later or – so anyway – Sometime during the day, he's not there. So that's yeah. when the girls and I take everything out and we start decorating yeah. Christmas. So that's oh, our, nice. I can't yeah, wait. Our we usually have guys over that, um, you know, they can't get home. Yeah. So you usually have teammates over if they don't have family or if it's just like them and their kid or whomever. Yeah. Um, that way they're not like everybody's not like by themselves in their little places mm-hmm. everywhere. Like we can kind of get together That's so awesome. and, and love on each other a little bit, have a good time, have some food. Yeah. This year I'm going to do something a little different. I've learned how to make a vegan heavy cream Ooh. from Charity, my friend Charity, Derek Morgan's wife. Um, and so I'm going to try to cook all my cakes and pies vegan this That's year awesome. yes. and if i can figure out how to do that and still keep my grandmama's <laughs> flavor in there then i might be on to something so oh, i'm looking forward you can to do that it. you can do it That's gonna i'm be looking awesome. forward to that so That's what is great. yours when do y'all decorate well we decorate right after thanksgiving as well but like in my house in my mom when we grew up my mom would you know we'd get the fake tree down from the attic we'd all put it together and do Aww. all the branches and it yeah. was like you know <laughs> so uncomfortable (laughs) and then we'd all hang the ornaments it was so sweet and so the first year that josh joined us and like the family he's like all right what are the rules like how do i put the ornaments on we're like there are no rules (laughs) and then he hangs the first ornament we're all like oh no (laughs) can't put it there like that's mom's favorite has to go here has to go here so i feel like decorating the tree is like our big thing but his family josh's family does christmas eve they open all the gifts oh wow which kind of i know well, and I feel like some people, like I know other families that do yeah. that too, but it works out because when we do like Christmas Eve with his family, yeah, and yeah. With mine, oh, that's nice. Whenever, yeah. whenever we started having kids, we lived in. Uh, well, Taylor was born in Georgia. Bailey was born in Texas, and then we moved to Boston when Bailey was just a baby and Taylor was four. So that's their main Christmas time. But we didn't have any family around. We didn't do anything on Christmas Eve. So to make it special for them, I would let them open Christmas gifts from our parents and aunts and uncles and stuff like that. Because I wanted Christmas Eve to be fun. Mm -hmm. Do something. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. We'll have to figure out how we're going to navigate that too now that you said that. Mm -hmm. They haven't been old enough to really know the difference. Right. But we'll be in the same spot because – Unless our family can get up here, yeah. then we're usually just kind of hanging out. The first couple of years, we will go to like Maggiano's or, <laughs> you know, Valentino's and just go sit down and just have dinner together, whatever yeah. they were serving that day. Yeah. Um, but now we've been trying to have a little bit more of like a home situation yeah, of like people you, over yeah. and doing things. Yeah. Yeah. To make um, 
traditions for your kids yeah. now. I know. That's well. the shift is then you come into your own traditions and right. you're no longer doing yeah. like what your parents did. And it's well, interesting. Yeah. That's why we had to invite people because I didn't know how, to, I don't know how to cook holiday food for two people. It's like either you're yeah. cooking it for 18 <laughs> oh, exactly. or like, what am I doing? So yeah. we had to go out to dinner because I was making all this food the first year and he was like, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> what do you, what do you cook besides pies? Vegan, oh, maybe I, vegan. Yeah, maybe vegan. I'm praying <laughs> on it. Um, I, everything. We usually do um, like a turkey, um, salmon, brisket, macaroni and cheese, mashed potato, like all the things, sweet potatoes, uh, cornbread. I don't do anything without cornbread. Cornbread is, <laughs> no. a, is a food group in my house. So yeah. we're doing, make sure we have our honey cornbread. Um, and then a vegetable. If I don't have vegetables, Kevin will pass out. So we're going to have... <laughs> <laughs> Some type of green bean, Brussels sprouts or something, something green. And yeah. that, that fits that requirement. And then all the cakes and pies because I love oh, them all. That's <laughs> amazing. Gosh. We do breakfast. <laughs> you oh, do? Wow. Yeah. So that's a tradition that I got from my in-laws. I don't remember why they did it, but she wakes up and she does a huge brunch. Oh, that's And sweet. I know why because she said Thanksgiving is was so close and it's oh, all the yeah. same food. Oh, that's true. So I kind of took that on. And I, in oh. fact, if John has to work in the morning or after opening gifts, we'll still do a small brunch at night. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a fun. good idea, I actually. Brunch. I love that. Yeah. I might have to steal that one from you. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. I feel like we do Christmas – uh, we like do Christmas dinner kind of on well we kind of do all of it it's like yeah. Christmas Eve then brunch on yeah. Christmas because it takes us like four years to open gifts I swear <laughs> it's like we're all in the family room it's like someone needs a drink someone's got a piece someone's got to do this someone's got to do that and then we all do it one at a time yeah oh wow do you yeah. guys just like we do go it one for at a time. it oh my gosh it takes yeah. so long but it's fun and the kids know they'll see a similar package and they're yeah. like okay on the count to three. Yes. One, two, three. And then they'll open it together. <laughs> but do they <laughs> tell each other? We tell each other. Yeah. You hurry like, it up and open it. it. Oh, <laughs> that is so cute. I used to do that with my sister. We that spoil is so it. cute. <laughs> yeah. My family used to wrap everybody's gifts in like their own. Like everybody had different wrapping paper. So oh, you didn't smart. get disappointed if you're like, any more for me? Like, you know what's yours <laughs> and what's somebody else's. And that's oh. it. So we'll see. Kevin and I are trying to figure out how we're going to approach Christmas with our kids right now we're saying we're gonna do just three gifts and that's it every year mm-hmm. we'll see if they wear us down but right now like that's the <laughs> that's the plan <laughs> just the three gifts wow that takes a lot of i was about uh, to say i don't know if I do yeah that. i, I know. do know that people that have i know families that do do that and yeah. i love that we're gonna make them like volunteer or something and then we'll just do like a a specified number and then we'll mm-hmm. just like leave That's it at good. that so it doesn't turn into like a whole thing i love like the christmas santa k moment mm-hmm. so i just no. try to like make it look like more than it is oh, <laughs> or else you have to get like so many gifts oh yeah and then they just open all of them and they're too overwhelmed yeah to and they're like yeah what went on yeah. That's why I, I do the grandparents and all on the on day the before Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I don't smart. want them to get confused and yeah, you know, oh, that's really yeah. good. That's yeah. Nice. yeah, well, we'll figure it out. We'll, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for I having know. me. I had a great time. And your dress like stunned all of us. I know. On our oh, holiday episode. I, I love, love it. Christmas. I was ready to break you out. Are, the I know. I'm like, go for it. Well, where can people find you or the foundation? What wherever you want uh, people to follow our foundation website is byatfamilylegacy.org um and then we're on instagram uh twitter all the things um kevin's page links to that my page is clark byer um i'm not gonna tell you to go there because i really don't have much on there but if you yeah. like <laughs> teach his own um <laughs> and i'm linked to the foundation page as well but yeah follow our page we do a lot of cool things throughout the year and we can use all the support we can get to help reach everybody in Tennessee that we can. I mean, we do all around the world, but we really try to love on Tennessee because Tennessee has really loved on us. So. Aww. That's so nice. Love oh, we love you. <laughs> yeah, you're we amazing. You so Thank you for Thank everything you. you do you. for the community. It's awesome. It. Turn it up now.